Hey there, we're back, ready for some hot, hot rogue action. Now, if you're looking at the screen, you may notice there's no, uh, there's no real way to reload your game. There's no, like, menu. Classic Rogue uses a really weird system. Um, if you want to reload your game, and it took me a while to figure this out, because there's no, uh, nowhere is this documented. Um, I just stumbled on it by accident. But if you want to reload your game, when you come to the title screen here, the very first thing you're faced with is Rogue's name, you have to type in the Rogue's name that you last used. Fortunately, I recall it was Sir Kirgrath. If you've forgotten, I guess you could probably look for a file called Sir Kirgrath, is my guess. But uh, I don't know. But we type in the name. When I hit enter, it'll load the game. Now, I want to preface this by saying, watch how cool what follows is. Enter. Boom! So first of all, here we are, back at level 2, and uh, back in our tiles off mode. But did you see that action unfolding? There is something to classic rogue called rec files, .rec files. Every time you quit the game, or die, it creates a new rec file. You can play these back directly. Uh, there's a way to do so, I forget how. But um, also every time you... Uh, maybe it means how, maybe that's how. You just type in the name of the character and it, and it redoes that for you. Um, but uh, every time you, you start the game again and reload your last save, it runs through a really quick uh, playthrough like that um, of, of what you did in the previous the previous game. Uh, the reason for this, actually, is in case you're playing competitively, in case, in case you're playing with a friend, and you're like, I can beat the game, you can't, and you beat the game, and he's like, bullshit, you, you hex-edited your character or something, you have a rec file. You can literally prove, hey, watch the playthrough, here's the damn game. Or you can use OBS Studio and prove it the way... We will not prove it here, because I will not win this game. Uh, as I mentioned, the, the Amulet of Yendor is down on level 26. Oh, these graphics are painful. Down on level 26. <laughs> That's a hobgoblin. Um, and uh, the farthest I've ever made a character is level 16. I've never, I've never gotten within 10 levels of the... I've gotten within 10 levels of the, of the Amulet. I've never gotten it, I've never retrieved it to the surface. And I see no logical reason to assume that this will be any different. So brace yourself for a short game, but after our Umoria game that was endless, I'm pressing S here, nothing. Um, that's probably a good thing. Oh, a bat. Got it. So that Umoria game went on for a long time. I, Ice Monster. And there I got the gold. Not sure. Did, did it not, was I not on the gold? Did it not let me pick up the gold because the ice monster was beside me? Or was the ice monster on the gold? I didn't quite notice that. So far, everything's pretty easy. Not always. My last game, when I was testing, I died in the first level. It happens. There's a staircase. There's a hobgoblin. Hobgoblin's a pretty easy monster. Again, how do I know it's an easy monster? A, from playing and experimenting. B, because I, I did look up a... Uh, a spoiler. Um, because this game gives you so little information, how else are you going to make a tactical decision when you have no idea if one weapon's better than the other? I found a longsword, uh, and I was like, I don't know if this is any better than my mace. How do I know? So I had to look it up. Yes, it is. As Incidentally, it does 3d4 damage instead of 2d4, which is 3 to 12 instead of 2 to 8. Kestrel dead. Picking this up. Uh, I'm assuming that's a... Ring? Let's find out. Oh, scale mail. Neat. We have new armor. Now I can throw that on. Um, it might be cursed, though, is a danger. Let's look at our inventory. We don't know anything about it. Let's try our new scroll. Read C. Oh, C. It was called Fam Hizyao. What? Did I press the wrong thing? What do you want to call it? Oh, am I renaming it? I didn't mean that. Renamed. Okay, it's the rename scroll. Maybe I pressed Shift R by accident. R. We're read. That's interesting, eh? Let's look at that Shift R. Capital R is remove ring. I don't know what the hell we just did. We renamed that scroll somehow. Well, let's read the scroll that is now called renamed. As you read the scroll, it vanishes. Oh, now this scroll has a map on it. So there, we've uncovered what scrolls of mapping are. In the future, if we find renamed scrolls, I think they'll now be called Scrolls of Mapping. It's possible they'll be called Renamed because I was stupid enough to call them that. But if they are, fine. Then we know what, we know what renamed scrolls are. So there's one less scroll to worry about. One scroll we've got, uh, we've got written down. Now I want to show you something right here. I'm going to go back to the non-tiles for a second because it's clearer there. 
As you can see, that emu is to my northeast. You can move diagonally in this. You can move northeast, southeast, whatever. But you cannot move diagonally if there is a wall beside you, essentially. So I can't move northeast, northwest, southeast. I can't do that right now because there's a wall to the east and a wall to the west. Which means also I can't attack this emu. Nor can it attack me. So I'm going to press period to pass my turn, let it move into place. Now I can attack it. There, it's dead. I'm not going to wear that scale mail right now. We've already enchanted our ring mail, which is now ring mail plus two, correct? Yeah, plus two ring mail. So, there we go. So a scroll of mapping does not fill in the blanks. It just uh, shows you the outline, just as it does, incidentally, in Moria, which took a lot of its ideas directly from here. It was, uh, as I think I mentioned, Moria began... Oh, look at that. Look how cool that is. Love it. Um, Moria began as a... as that... as... as Robert Konecki's attempt to recreate Rogue since he didn't have access to this game. And then from then it grew into a, a much more much bigger, much more elaborate game. We are now an adventurer with 30 health. Two Amber Potions, man. We got two of them. I don't want to use them right now, though, because I don't know... Like, What if we? What if it's a healing potion we wasted? There, I searched there with the S key in there. We found a door. More food. That's good. Or slime molds. I think slime molds are inferior food, but they might just be food. I don't even know. We have another scroll. Let's try reading this one, because maybe it's identify. What do you want to call it? I don't fucking know. Uh, that's weird. Other scroll. I guess it did, no I did nothing I could tell what it did. It's a scroll. When I read it, it did something, and I have no... I had no way to discern what it did. Which is a very cool feature. Again, Moria adopts it. Um, it might be a scroll like that put monsters to sleep, say, adjacent to me. But because there were no monsters to sleep, or mo monsters adjacent to me, I couldn't tell that that's the effect it had. And therefore, we don't know what it did. But if we find a scroll called Other Scroll, well, we'll know to use it maybe adjacent to monsters, as an example. Let's go kill this hobgoblin. And pick up these arrows. Nine more arrows. So we now have... 33 plus 9. Now, why is it not stacking? Why is it 33 plus 0 plus 0 arrows? We don't know if those arrows are magical. They might have, like, an enchantment on them. We're now hungry, by the way. Did you see that in the bottom right corner of the screen? Hungry? I'll have to eat in a second. Let's kill this bat first. Oh, my God. Die, bat. thing flutters around a lot. It's hard to hit. Let's press E for eat. Let's eat a slime mold. My, that was a yummy slime mold. All right, let's continue walking here. I'm walking here. Kestrel, not a problem. One would hope. I didn't see what I picked up. More rations of food. Good. If, if the slime mold are inferior foods, then we found a, an actual food. All right. We now have a scroll called Armor Scroll, which will enchant our armor. Let's use it. Why not? Let's just enchant our ringmail. Now our armor is plus three ring mail. Um, we have, however, stumbled across something new. So let's point it out. We've entered this room, and for the first time, we do not see all the way to the other side of the room. This is a dark room. Um, there are no dark rooms on the first level of the dungeon, as far as I know. Shit. We'll talk about this in a second. Um, they grow more and more common as you progress. By about level 12 or 13 or so, all the rooms are darkened. It, it, it's an interesting mechanic, and it, and it, it, um, you know, it makes the game more challenging. You can't see monsters coming and this kind of thing. I'm sure it serves a gameplay balance purpose. Therefore, as a player, though, it sure does get boring exploring all these rooms manually. There's not um, in Moria. I last played a paladin who had a, a, a spell called Call Light. If I entered a darkened room, I cast Call Light. The room lit up. Done. Um, it was still a neat mechanic because it still forced me to use my spells and spell points. Mana, as it's called. But um, but it wasn't annoying like having to walk around an endlessly dark area. So I, I, I'm not a fan of how dark the rooms get in this game. All right, here we are in a bear trap. It's a trap. There are booby traps in this game. You can't see them until you step on them. There's a few different types. This is one of them. Uh, we took damage, as you can see. We're down, down to 28 out of 30 hit points. I think we had full before that. But when I'm trying to move, I can't. It took a few tries. Now, traps in this game do not disappear. You can see it right there to our south. 
Um, if we step in it again, we'll be caught in it again. So let's avoid it. Now, if you want to know what a, what a trap does because you somehow identified one or found one and you don't know what it is, you can press the shift. And for me, it's the number six. It's the little up arrow. Here, I'll show you in the uh, question marks. Uh, third down from the top on the right-hand column. You'll see the up arrow there. And a direction is identify traps. Let's try that. Shift six, which direction to the south? You found a bear trap. That's what it is. Bear trap with no space in it for some reason. I think it had a space in it when it hit us. No space in this in the word bear trap for some reason. <laughs> More gold. Okay. Now, as you can see, the the darkened rooms. When you walk around, the, at least the the walls and the and the doors do remain visible. But uh, you can't see what else is in there. The trap remains visible too. That's kind of nice. Hey, a branch in the corridor. That's a neat neat twist. You don't usually see that uh, very often in this game. The game tends to have very simple layouts. As you can see, the entire level fits in one screen. And it's always just these rectangular rooms adjoined to other rectangular rooms by these twisting corridors. But occasionally you get a neat little branch to the corridor or something. Hmm. I'm not going to drink that potion yet. There's still there's certain types of potions I might want later on, and I don't want to waste one right now. So let's hang on to it for now and just proceed to the next level as fast as we can. Oops. Ooh, he's tearing us down, isn't he? Let's try pressing the period button a few times. Let's get out of this. Let's get into an area where we can see a monster if it comes at us. Like that emu. I'm going to press space to, or, or period to pass my turn until it comes to me. I'm going to press it a little more until we get up to, say, 24. I'm holding it down. There we go. The rest of it I'll regain as I walk. I don't want to risk dying en route to the stairs. na 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 it's like the old Batman effect. I like that zoom in effect. <laughs> All right. What? What? Uh, I didn't mean to do that. I was trying to trying to run. We're at dungeon level four. Incidentally, secret doors don't have to be at the end of corridors. There could be, there could be and probably is one in that big room there, but uh, I'm not going to look for it unless I have a reason to because it wastes a lot of time searching. Whoa. Okay, what just happened? We stepped on the food. We now have three rations of food. That's good. Press space to get past the more prompt. You are frozen by a blast of frost from the ice monster. So we couldn't see it up there, but it could see us. It shot us with his ice ray. It froze us in place. We don't get to move until it tells us we can. It hit us. We're still stuck. Okay, now we're not. You can move again. Sometimes he gets a lot of multiple attacks. It's dead. We got lucky there. All right. Bat. Let's press period. No, it doesn't know we're here yet. So let's just go in and attack it. And let's grab that gold. Now, interesting. To my left, what you are seeing is slime. The reason that's interesting, um, A, it's an interesting monster. It, it can sometimes divide and create multiple copies of itself and attack you uh, with more than one monster, um, which is kind of a neat property. The reason it's particularly interesting, though, is that let's go to our, our shitty graphics. In shitty graphics mode, the slime is represented by the letter S. Originally, in the earliest versions of Rogue, the letter S stood for snake. Now, there are still rattlesnakes in this game, but originally there was rattlesnakes and snakes, two separate monsters. Classic Rogue has replaced snakes with slimes. Uh, I think it's probably the more interesting creature, so it's probably a good move. Um, but again, I don't know if that's because Classic Rogue is a different game from Rogue, and that's the one fundamental difference, is that they replaced snakes with slimes. Or if Rogue eventually replaced snakes with slimes, and this is just a really late version of the game. I don't know. But I know you won't meet... You'll meet rattlesnakes in this game. You will not meet snakes. You'll meet slimes instead. There are only 26 monsters in this game, each represented by one letter of the alphabet. I missed it. It divides. See that? There's two of them. Ick. There's more. Let's back off so they can't both attack us at once. Fuck it. Divide it again. There's three of them in there now. One dead. Let's let them come to us. Press period. 
There it is. I'm gonna back off. Oops. Oh, there it is, actually. I divide it again. I mean, we're getting experience for it, but if they keep dividing, they're gonna kill us. Backing off. I'm gonna go up to. Whoa, I wasn't paying attention. I was holding down the period key and it came running out of the corridor. Don't hold down the period key. Don't hold down any key. That's almost true of any roguelike. Press the key one at a time, and you're more likely to survive. Son of a bitch. Whew. Let's go in here and press the key one at a time. Period key. Until we're at 20. You know what? We're going to drink a potion now as well. Let's see if we can learn anything about a potion. Quaff. Let's try C, an amber potion. We have two of them. Hey, this takes great. It makes you feel warm all over. I think it's a strength potion. Uh, restore strength. Let's call that. Now, why did I call it that? You say it, it's, it said it's warm all over. Your hits was... I don't know if you noticed, but my hits was written in white. I think it's written in white because I had pressed period enough that it coincidentally was regenerating one hit point then. Um, a, I've looked at a spoiler. <laughs> and when it says warm all over, I'm pretty sure it's a restore strength. But B, it also... The fact that it has rename it means we couldn't notice the effect. Our strength is currently 16 out of 16, so that's why we couldn't notice it. Again, I, some people would argue you shouldn't be looking at that kind of stuff, but I think the game is a lot more fun if you know what you're doing, and there's just so little information provided in this game that it's unlikely you'll figure out what you're doing um, unless you do one of two things, unless you look up spoilers, when, whereupon the game instantly becomes more fun because you at least have a, a fighting chance. And you have information that you probably should have access to anyway. Or B, if you play the game so incessantly that you eventually figure it out. Now you could say, well, hey, that's what you're supposed to do. And I, I, when this game came out in 1981, it was the only game like it. I mean, beyond Apple Manor preceded it. Um, and it was a similar game, but it preceded it by a few months only. And it was, you know, different enough that it was a different game, and it was, a, I think, a different system, too. It was for Mac, I think, or Apple, rather. I think that's why it's called Beyond Apple Manor. I'm not sure. Maybe not. Um, in any event, this was really the only game of its, of its kind, truly. Um, and, you know, playing it endlessly would make sense. What else are you going to do with a, with a PDP system? PDP computer? Um, this is about your only option for an adventure game back then, or a dungeon crawl. Um, or one of the few. It's certainly the only roguelike. But uh, nowadays we have so many. Hell, I intend to play so many in this series. I'm not going to play this game 4,000 times to figure out what everything means by trial and error. Got two orange potions now. You know what? Let's switch to our, let's switch to our bow. That thing that's coming at us, let's wield. I press W for wield. I'm wielding now a short bow. And now I'm going to press T to the east. To shoot J, which is my arrows. T stands for throw. We're throwing our arrows. Because we're wielding our short bow, I think that means we're firing them. There, we got it. It's dead. And we went up a level. We're now a fighter. Um, rattlesnakes, that, that's what that was. It was rattlesnakes. Let's put our mace back on. Rattlesnakes are a particularly dangerous foe because when they hit you, they can permanently drain your strength. And again, as far as I know, strength has to do with your combat effectiveness. I don't have any details on that, but that's roughly what it means. So you don't want that drained if you can avoid it. Now, here's another reason why the missile... Another reason why the darkened rooms suck so much is... Like, missile weapons are completely ineffective here. I have no idea what's in here. How the hell am I supposed to shoot anything with a missile weapon? Are they only meant to be used in the first few levels of the game? Doesn't that seem cheap? There are wands of light, which can light up a room. That was a nice long corridor. But, um, they're rare. You'd have to identify them. And additionally, uh, they have a, a set number of charges. So once you've used those charges, you're, uh, you're going to be SOL in terms of lighting up a room. I don't know if there's a way to recharge them or not. There might be a recharge scroll. I have no idea. Ah, here comes a slime. As a rule, I don't like sl fighting slimes in this. Let's shoot it. What am I doing? I. Oops. T. My room is very dark right now. 
direction. And I want K. I hit it. T. East. K. I killed it. Good. I don't very often use my bow in this game. I don't think to. And it's probably part of the reason why I die so often. We are using the mace now, right? I. I. Yeah, mason is in hand. All right, that's probably the level. Let's nonetheless fill it in. And kill this bat. All right, we want to get out of here. Quickest way to the stairs. Oh, it's pouring rain, huh? Pouring rain outside. My poor... Ah, there you go. Strength is down to 15 now instead of 16. Now, we do have that potion of restore strength, but I'm not going to use it yet because we may get drained a lot more. It's pouring rain. I feel bad. My uh, wife's on her way home from work right now and is probably stuck in this nonsense. Here we go. If we get down below 10, I'll, I'll use that potion. Or if we feel like we need it for some reason. I got two of them now. Nonetheless, there's going to be more of these things. Let's not use it yet. More arrows. Are they in a separate stack or is it... Yeah, a totally separate stack. If you want to drop an item, by the way, you press D. Oh, we're hungry. Let's press the letter E. Let's eat our other slime mold. Free up an inventory slot. There we go. Kestrel. Got about eight minutes left in this video, if, if I'm keeping accurate track. Hopefully I am. Eh, let's go down. I got three of them now. <laughs> we can definitely use it now. But we're not going to yet. Let me get a little more strength drained first. Yeah, we got it before it could freeze us. There you go. Yeah, very simple dungeon designs. You do get the branching corridors once in a while. You very rarely get these little mini mazes as well. Once in a while, it'll make the corridors in these little tiny sort of mazes. But, uh... Oh, there's lightning now. Can you hear that? I should probably quit soon because there's a theoretical chance. Not a good chance, but a theoretical chance the power will go out. And I don't know if this uh, video will get erased. I don't know what happens to OBS if you're crash in the middle of a video. Let's try and get our eight minutes in, if we can. Whoa. Let's back off. Weaker. Fuck you, rattlesnake. There we go. Kill off the cob the hob going. Once we're off this level and we hit the next level, we will uh, use our, strength, our restore strength potion. That's the plan. And we'll still have two left after that. Fuck, they're duplicating. Replicating. Oh, shoot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, we are trapped here. All right, one of them is dead, thank God. Oh, fuck me. All right, we're going to try and get rid of this guy. Obviously, we're going to try and get rid of this guy. Okay, we're going to back off here. Oh, fuck, there's another one. Okay. Let's try pressing period. Let's get some health back. At least up to 22. Wasting time, man. we got to get a move on or else we're going to run out of food before we can get done this game. But that was close. Level 6. I can usually do better than level 6. Not always. Like I said, in my last game I tried, just as a test, I died in level 1. You never know. All right, there, there might be a secret door or something along here, but I'm going to do a quick, quick few searches. Nah. It's probably faster just to uh, make our way back via this method. Whoa. Orc. Orcs are a pretty tough foe. They also have an interesting... F son of a bitch. They have an interesting feature as well in that if there's gold in a room, if, if an orc has a line of sight to gold it will move directly to the gold and stand on it. I don't think it takes it, at least not in Classic Rogue. I'm not sure if it would have in another version. In Classic Rogue, it won't take the gold. 
but it will stand on top of it, and you can't get that gold unless you kill the orc, if you want the gold. Now I mentioned, I'm going to mention one last thing. We're going to go down here, drink the, uh, unless there's a rattlesnake in view, I'm going to drink that potion. I'll just kill this guy first. All right, let's quaff C. There, our strength's all the way back to 16. All right. Now if you look at our inventory, it is actually called, it's still called the same thing. Interesting. Um, I mentioned earlier why gold, why the system of gold equaling score is, in my opinion, a bad system. Yes, it's cool to have the scoring system. Yes, absolutely. But you already have an objective. Your principal objective in the game, let's search this, is to find the amulet of Yendor and to get it back to the surface. Now let's say there's gold in the top left corner of this room. I don't, I don't, I don't want to do the counting. It's about 10 or 12 squares away. Let's say I want that gold because I'm like, hey, score. And I walk over to get that gold. It takes me like 12 turns to get there. And, and another 12 turns to get back. That's 24 turns of food eating that's down the tubes. And I am therefore slightly less likely to win the game because it's more likely I'll starve than if I had ignored the gold entirely. On top of that, it's entirely possible there's a trap between me and that gold. So by going for the gold, I put myself at risk. I'm still going to go for it. I'm telling you right now, it's just it's a hardwired thing into any roguelike player. You see gold, you go for it. Yay, your rations of food. But it's it's a system that trying to get a good score actively hinders your ability to win the game, by definition. Unless gold has another purpose that I'm not aware of. And I do not believe it does. We're on level 7. Um, let's grab this. We're going to finish up here soon. Now I'll tell you something else I know about the game, not from spoilers, but from playing a lot. Ooh, that was a lot of gold. Um, oh, it wasn't just that. It was We're frozen by an ice monster. Let's see if he's going to kill us. That one missed us. The frost bounces as well. A neat thing that ice monsters can do, sometimes when they miss you, they shoot their bolt of ice. It actually bounces back and hits them. It's kind of neat. I don't know if they can hit other monsters. There, I can move again. Let's kill it. Ice monster's pretty cool foe. We're going to quit in just one minute, but um, three minutes. Um, we're on dungeon level 7. Around dungeon level 8. Certainly by dungeon level 10, I know for certain from a previous game I just played to, again, get in the groove of how this game works. Certainly by dungeon level 10, possibly by dungeon level 8. That's what I seem to remember from my past um, playthroughs. You start encountering monsters called Aquators. Incidentally, on the c title screen of this game, that monster we see fighting us, I think is supposed to be an Aquator. No, no, no secret passage there. Oh, a zombie. All right, it's dead. Aquators have a very vicious power. Uh, and that is when they hit you, they rust your armor. They damage your armor by one level. So if, if an Aquator hit us, our armor class would no longer be seven, it would be six, and so on. Um, for that reason, my usual policy is when I reach Aquator levels, which is roughly eight through about 14, roughly is when they show up and stay, I usually walk around with no armor on. Now I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put the scale mail on when we hit that level. Let's see if we can finish this level before we uh, call it quits. Now you'll see this orc is going to go right for the gold and he's going to stay there. The cool thing about that is I can fight the... Let's, let's get our bow out. Matter of fact, I could probably kill that orc with a bow. It didn't even occur to me. Wield J. T. To the west. K. There, I hit it. T. To the west. K. Damn it, I missed it. Now i got to take the time to wield a new weapon. I. It hit us, but it didn't didn't uh, drain our strength. Okay. Here's some more arrows. All right, let's wheel our short bow then. Why, why risk getting hurt? J. T. To the west. K. There, we killed it. That's a cool little method. Get off my gold. You want to sit on my gold? I'm going to snipe you. And you will just bludgeon to death. We got lots of food. I don't usually have this much food by this point. That's a good thing. Lots of gold, too. Sir Kirgarath may end up being a high scorer. I mean, we're not there yet, but he's doing alright. Here, I'm sure there's a secret door here. There we go. Save us having to go the other long way around to get into this hallway. Right here, too. Oh, here's a orc. Okay. That's it for this level. Let's get a... Uh, maybe not. Did we, yeah, we search this room? Pfft. Search. Search. 
I love that run feature. Oh, a centaur. They are a new and powerful monster. I forget what their ability is. I'm going to look it up in between games. I think they have a special ability, but I know one special ability they have is they're just fucking tough. You want to be careful fighting centaurs. They can kick your ass. Oh, Jesus. Can they ever, eh? You know what I'm going to do? Can I survive it? I'm going to step to the left onto that staircase. And I'm going to go down the staircase and hope to God. Okay. You know what? I'm not quitting the game just yet because we may die in 10 seconds and then we have a third video that's just a two second death. I'm going to stay alive for a minute. This could be a bad move, but I'm going to drink a potion. Let's try the orange potion. You feel yourself moving much faster. Okay, it's a potion of speed. Haste to self. Let's try quaffing the F. Let's try quaffing the F out of that Ecru potion. You feel stronger with bulging mushrooms. Okay, we've identified a strength potion. Our strength is now 17 instead of 16. That said, I don't know what the hell's in this room, right? Can we get anywhere where we can feel a bit of safety? All right, we're slowing down again. If this room looks clear, I'm going to hole up in a corner and press the period key. If we can get up to 20... Oh, we got we to search, actually. No, let's search. And so searching, we may find... Uh, there's no way out of this room unless we search. We may, we may get our health back just by the time it'll take to search. Lucky break. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, I'm going to call it quits here then. Um, I'm going to control X in one second, but I'll be back uh, probably tomorrow. Finish up this uh, this game. We're not doing too bad. Two episodes, uh, about 50 minutes we've been playing. We're already down to level 8 out of 26. You can see it's a much, much shorter game than Moria. You probably wrap this up in a, I'd say a, a winning game is probably about four hours, maybe five hours is a guess. I've never won. Uh, for us, it's probably we're probably looking at a less than two hour game total because we'll be dead by the time we hit level 16, probably. All right, there's my pessimism. Gen X, go Gen X. All right, guys.